Hi YouTube, some of you would have seen the video that I posted last year where I caught a privet hawk moth in my moth trap and I was lucky enough that she laid about a hundred eggs and I basically reared them all up. So I ended up with a lot of chrysalis like this um, and I put them in my shed over the winter just like this in this tub all in rows. You can see they've got slightly damp soil um, and they need that so they don't dry up over the winter. Very few holes in the lid of the tub, again just to stop them from drying out. And I would check on them every week or every couple of weeks just to make sure that the soil hadn't dried out. And you can give them a really good spray and um, because the soil is quite deep in this tub, any excess water kind of drains to the bottom so it stops the um, chrysalis from being in like a sort of puddle of water basically. It's obviously important to keep them somewhere cold over the winter so my shed was ideal. It would be no good for me to bring them in and keep them in my living room for example because it's too warm for them. They need to feel the cold so that when the spring and the summer comes they feel the temperature change and then they'll hatch out. Um, it's also worth mentioning I couldn't just put them in a tub like I've done here and then put them straight outside literally um, because probably over the winter they, these guys might freeze because they're on the top surface of the um, soil. Obviously in the wild they bury down and they make their holes under the soil um, but because I've got them on top all laid out in rows so I could kind of see them and keep an eye on them um, that's why it's important to keep them in a shed so it is really cold in my shed but not quite as freezing cold as it would be outside over the winter. So if you didn't see my previous video um, it's where I hatched out a hundred privet hawk moth eggs and then reared up all the caterpillars. The caterpillars get absolutely massive and by the end of it when they were particularly huge I was getting through a bin bag full of privet every day and I was rearing them up in our bath because they needed a lot of space. I will add a link to that video at the end of this video in case you didn't see it you can go back and have a look at it. So I always get a little bit nervous when I'm rearing things in large numbers because it's quite a responsibility and I just worry that if anything goes wrong I could lose them all in one sort of go and that would be awful so what I ended up doing with these guys is I did a, a reptile show um, where you could sell kind of livestock and insects and things and I took some of the caterpillars along and I sold some at the show so about 30 caterpillars were sold and those went off in various directions and hopefully those people would have reared them up just as well as I did and they would have released them all over the country Right, so I've briefly removed all of these from this tub. This gives me all the soil that was left in the tub and I'm going to put that into this mesh cage here that I've set up. I've got it just hanging from my um, window here. And you can see it's a really cool tall mesh cage and I've just put a plant pot in the bottom and I'm going to pour the soil into that plant pot and then put all the chrysalis into here. Like this. Incidentally, it's worth me mentioning that with these pupae, if you want to figure out if they're alive or dead, um, basically when they die, it's normally because they've dried up and they become rigid and they don't wiggle anymore. So normally when you spray them like this, they wiggle quite a bit. Um, and failing that, if you pick one up, you can normally just carefully move the pointy end, the abdomen bit, and it will just move just a little bit and it that just proves that it's still alive basically. You obviously have to be very careful when you do that because you don't want to break the end off the chrysalis. The next step with this setup was to put something in that the moths can climb up because when they hatch out of the chrysalis you can see here that there's quite a distance between the chrysalis and the top of the pot and they wouldn't be able to climb up there. So by adding in these plastic plants, it gives them something to grip on that they can climb up. And once they get high enough, they'll be up on the netting of the cage. And the netting's really good grip for the um, moth's legs. And then the moths can climb up the netting and then they can dry out their wings. Next, I wanted to move the whole cage outside. 
um, but it's trying to find a location in the garden that's good enough because you need somewhere that's going to be in the shade basically you don't want anywhere in the sun so here you know this looks ideal because there's a bit of shade in behind there but at certain times of the day the sun's going to be hitting it um same over here that i can put it by this bit of fence it looks ideal now this time of the day because it's in shadow but again the sun will move around and the sun will just hit that so i've got to just find a good spot um nowhere here is any good um uh, you know you sort of think oh you could put it under the barbecue or something i suppose but um there's not really enough space so i looked down the garden looking for all kinds of places where i could put it um another place that looks ideal but the sun will hit it again um so i end up putting it at the bottom of the garden in between my studio and my kids playhouse um, and then i hang it up from this ladder so you can see it here that I've positioned it um, and I've hung it on some rope and then what I'll also do because again even here the sun might kind of come round at a certain time of day and hit it I'm going to end up putting a great big um, sort of play mat around it to kind of shadow it uh, which I think is an ideal way of doing it okay I hung this up probably on the first week of June and I read they can hatch in June or July. So it's been up for quite a while and the moth started hatching. Probably was up for about three weeks. Um, and I was getting my son to, you know, look in every day and see if he could see any moths that had hatched out. And so these ones actually looked like they'd hatched out and they'd been in there for two or three days. Because some of them have got like bald heads. And that's a way you can tell they've been flying around in the cage and also there are eggs you can see little green eggs on the sides of the mesh so again that shows that a couple of them have come out and mated and then a female's laid eggs all over the mesh so i think we had about 14 or something in here that had hatched and i'll uh, end up showing you these because I, I hang them on a fence basically and then allow them all to fly off in the evening okay here are those first 14 so i've got 13 hung up on the fence here and one of them's down on the floor you'll see in a second um, but this is a good way of doing it just hang them on the fence although one thing i would recommend is don't hang them on the fence in the daytime like i've done here because um, i had a couple of incidents so one incident was one moth which got stuck in a spider's web and i had to release that and there was another moth uh well two moths actually that were mating and i just saw a commotion in the garden through my window and i looked out and they were being harassed by a blackbird so i had to go and rescue those from a blackbird as well so you're better off um, doing it at night and then they can just fly straight off if you ever want to feed moths, then a good way of kind of making a sort of fake nectar is if you take some golden syrup and some honey, and then if you just put a very small amount of boiling water in a cup, and if you add basically like a tablespoon of golden syrup and a tablespoon of honey, and then stir it all up so that it dissolves really nicely into the boiling water, um, and then obviously you've got to let the water cool down, um, you can't give it to the moth while it's still boiling for obvious reasons. So yeah, let it really cool down. And then if you just take like a pipette or a little syringe like this, you can um, just get a little bit. And then basically if you put it where the mouth parts of the moth are, the pro where the proboscis is kind of curled up like a spring underneath, and you sort of touch it on, you'll see the moth kind of going you know like almost like sort of a lapping kind of um, motion if you're lucky they'll put their t um, tongues right out you know the proboscis will completely kind of uncurl and you'll see and it'll be much more obvious but even if they're just moving a little bit you can tell they're kind of drinking the fluid and the reason i've done it on this batch is because obviously they've been in that cage for a few days and their heads are all kind of bald and so they'll be in desperate need of a good feed before they fly off. 
Now that I know mine are hatching, I'll be releasing them every night, so I won't need to feed them because basically they will have just hatched out of their chrysalis and they'll be ready to fly straight away. And they'll be able to go off into the wild and um, find their own nectar from flowers and things. So with that first lot of 14 that had hatched out, I went out about half past 10 at night and they were all still hung on the fence. By 11 o'clock though, they had all flown off, apart from these two that ended up pairing up. So I made the decision to take out all of the empty chrysalis as they kind of hatched. Um, you'll see them because they're really light and obviously if they've got a big hole in them like this, they're obvious. But if you can't see them in amongst the other ones, if you just lightly blow, because they're so light, they kind of move about quite easily and then you can spot them and take them out. Um, mine laid quite a few eggs and the eggs are all over like so some of the eggs you can see that there's one here actually on the shell of a chrysalis but some of them were on the leaves and then some of them were on the net meshing of the cage as well so I have to sort of very gently remove all of the eggs and you can you can pull them off um, without causing them any harm they're pretty tough eggs you just got to be careful not to squash them obviously um, these ones that were laid on this bit of leaf, they were quite a bit more sort of glued on, so I ended up cutting the bit of leaf instead. I ended up just putting all of the eggs into this plastic rearing tub, and you can see I end up with actually about a hundred again. So I, I think it was just one female that had laid her eggs, and they seemed to lay around a hundred basically. Um, the chrysalis that I took out. You can see like I've got a row here with like 17, 17 had hatched by this stage. This is my method from removing them from net meshing. Um, basically what you're doing is just very carefully kind of um, pinching them between your two fingers. When you've just got a single egg like this, you just yeah put your thumb and your forefinger like this and just basically don't squeeze too hard. I mean, I, I'm quite delicate, so if you're quite heavy-handed, you you might need to be more careful, or you might end up with some squashed eggs. But like I say, the shells are fairly tough. And you can just pull them off and just drop them in. Um, and yeah, with a larger clump of eggs, it's probably a bit easier. But when they're singular like this, you just got to just be very delicate when you're kind of pulling them between your thumb and your forefinger. Right, there's a cool bit of footage coming up where I had the plant pot full of chrysalis in my living room and I heard this really loud cracking noise and it was basically one of the chrysalis hatching. So what I'm going to do is I'll not talk and you can just listen to this. Listen to the cracking sounds and then watch the moths hatch and see how quick they hatch out. It's much quicker than I expected it to be.
Yeah, so you saw there they hatched out really loudly, but also really quickly. Like they were all out in less than a minute, I would say. And that is much, much faster than I thought it would be. I thought I would be videoing a chrysalis hatching and then I'd have to do it as like a time lapse. But um, but no, it's really, really fast. So I've hatched out loads and loads of moths in the past and I've never been lucky enough to be there at the time when they actually hatch. So quite often they'll hatch at night and then I'll just see them the next morning with their wings completely dried out. You can see here their, their wings are still kind of shriveled up. Um, and then they go to this stage where the wings kind of spread down a little bit more. Um, but can you see like the wings are not flattened out they're like pointing downwards so they go like this for a while and then at the last minute the wings spread out and go flat and that's when you know that their wings are fully kind of um, pumped up and dried out yeah when they look like this basically so i thought they would take ages to hatch out the chrysalis i thought it'd be more like when a dragonfly hatches out of a dragonfly nymph skin that can take ages you know like up to an hour or something so yeah i thought it'd be much more like that okay when the next lot hatched out i had my parents come to visit me and they live in southampton so i had the um, bright idea of boxing some up and letting them take them home to southampton with them and then they could release them there that would be kind of spreading the moths out a bit more but uh, as it happens i put them on these kind of egg cartons in this plastic tub and they all kind of woke up and started trying to fly like this and i just thought they're going to wreck their wings and everything just even just on the drive back to southampton so i ended up just bringing them outside and releasing them in the day because they all wanted to fly off so <laughs> i thought i would let them most of them just flew a very short distance and then ended up resting on a bit of fence or a wall or something like that and then I guess they would just wait until dusk and then fly off properly. It makes sense for the moths to hatch out at a rate of about 10 or so each day because it means that when the wind changes, you know, like quite regularly the wind will change direction and then the moths, when they fly off each night, will be going to different locations anyway. These moths can fly for miles and miles. They quite often will actually cross the channel and come over from France and things like that. So yeah, they're really strong flyers. They will feed from many different flowers in the wild, but I think they prefer things with long kind of tubular shapes to them, a bit like honeysuckle, that sort of thing, uh, maybe fuchsias. But um, they also obviously will track down their actual food plants by the flowers. So like privet hedges, have got flowers and they'll visit those and also lilac which is their other food plant um, that's got flowers and that's one way for the moths to kind of find the food plant that they need to lay their eggs on these kinds of experiences have always been really rewarding for me because if you think about it i reared up a hundred caterpillars and yeah i sold like 30 of them at a show but hopefully those people did all right with their caterpillars as well so if I release these 70 moths that I've got here and you know those other people did all right with their caterpillars and they, they might be releasing their moths as well so if you say you know 50 out of those 100 moths um, will probably be female then each one of those can lay a hundred eggs this time and it just gives a real boost to the wild population of privet hawk moths the footage that you're seeing now is just footage of moths that I've hung on my fence again, but this time at dusk. And what's really nice about this is that they're not going to be on this fence for very long and then they'll fly off. And um, when they fly off, they fly really long distances and then hopefully they'll be spreading out nicely and finding privet hedges all over the south of England to lay their eggs on. I particularly like with this moth the bright pink that they've got on their abdomens and uh, on their kind of uh, hind wings they just look really kind of stunning but I've always liked this species more as a caterpillar because I was always really into caterpillars as a kid and yeah I just uh, love how kind of massive they get as a caterpillar and they're really bright vivid green with this right really dark black shiny tail 
and yeah just really impressive so like I say check out my other video at the end of this one if you want to see me rearing up the caterpillars last year here's a bit of footage of one revving up its wings just getting ready to fly this is what they do like and you get used to that when you keep moths you see it all the time and then it just uh, yeah starts running and then takes off basically <laughs> Right, you can see at the time of me editing this video, I've kept all the empty chrysalis of all of the moths that have hatched so far. And these are in rows of 10, so there's 60 here. Um, and then I've got some more that are left to hatch. But um, yeah, it's really cool to keep all the shells. Can you see the kind of white stuff on some of these chrysalis? That is just when the moths hatch out, they have this kind of excess fluid. That they need to release and sometimes if you pick up a moth that's just hatched it will release it all over your fingers and then you have to go and wash your hands but um it's nothing too bad it's just a kind of uh, white creamy sort of color right here's 11 chrysalis i've got left to hatch out they'll probably hatch within the next kind of day or two anyway um, and i've got one uh extra moth here that's hatched out as well so that's really cool and also some of the little eggs have started hatching as well so if you have a look in the tub do you remember where I put all the eggs before um, you can see in here there's over a hundred little caterpillars have hatched out so now I've got the dilemma of do I start again like I did last year and rear up these hundred caterpillars um, or do I just go and basically release them on all my neighbours privet hedges <laughs> Um, so I'm still thinking about that. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Check out my other videos if you get a chance. Hit subscribe if you want to see anything that I post up in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.